Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, we'll be learning about the dural venous sinuses. We'll be identifying all the dural venous sinuses in this 3D model, and also I'll show you the location of the major dural venous sinuses on a 3D real dissected uh, head neck specimen. So please watch the video till the end. And uh, first of all, what is a dural venous sinus? It is a kind of a drainage system, venous drainage system of the brain. Okay, so how it is different from the regular veins of the body? The dural venous sinuses are formed due to the splitting of the endosteal layer and meningeal layer of the dura mater. Okay, dura mater, the cranial dura mater, we know it has got two layers, the endosteal layer and the meningeal layer. Okay, so most of these dural venous sinuses, they are formed due to the splitting of the endosteal and meningeal layer. Okay, there are a few exceptions, we'll see that. So first of all, let's enumerate the uh, venous sinuses. For for enumerating, we can divide into two headings. Like there are some paired venous sinuses and there are some unpaired venous sinuses. Okay. So unpaired venous sinuses, if we see this large sinus that we can see here, that's the superior sagittal sinus. Okay. In between the two cerebral hemispheres, we know there is a partition between them that is referred to as Fox cerebri. Okay, on the upper margin of the Fox cerebri, here is the superior sagittal sinus, and on the lower margin here is the inferior sagittal sinus. Okay, so both these are unpaired venous sinuses, and there is a straight sinus which is present here. This is also unpaired. Then behind there is one sinus near the occipital bone. This is the occipital sinus this is also an unpaired sinus okay and just above the sphenoid bone anteriorly and posteriorly there are unpaired sinuses called as the intercavernous sinus okay this is the anterior intercavernous sinus there is the posterior intercavernous sinus cavernous sinus itself is a paired sinus that is present on each side of the sphenoid bone okay so the, the sinus connecting the cavernous sinus in the front and behind is referred to as anterior intercavernous and posterior intercavernous sinus okay and we can see some uh, venous plexus here there is a part of the bone which is referred to as clivus okay in the skull if you read there is a part here called as the clivus it is covered by venous plexus called as the basilar venous plexus okay so all these are the unpaired dural venous sinuses now let's look at the paired venous sinuses. So paired will be one on each side. The superior sagittal sinus, if we trace here, it continues here as the right transverse sinus. Okay. And here is also a transverse sinus. Okay. So transverse sinus is a paired venous sinus. Transverse sinus, when we continue further, here is the sigmoid sinus sigmoid sinus is also a paired sinus then we know this two large sinuses adjacent to the sphenoid bone the cavernous sinus right so cavernous sinus is a paired sinus then these two sinus we can see here adjacent to the petrous part of the temporal bone with here is the petrous part of the temporal bone this is the superior petrosal sinus and this one is the inferior petrosal sinus okay and in front of the cavernous sinus there is one sinus coming and draining that's referred to as the sphenoparietal sinus okay that also will be on each side okay so these are the paired venous sinuses Apart from the venous sinuses, there are some additional veins visible in this model. We can see here this vein, here this vein here. Okay, you can imagine the brain which is present here, and uh, somewhere in the middle, this vein is referred to as the superficial middle cerebral vein. Okay, and there is a vein which is anastomosing this superficial middle cerebral vein to the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, this is referred to as the superior This is referred to as the superior anastomotic vein of trollard okay and similarly there is one vein which is on the lower aspect this is called as the inferior anastomotic vein of labe okay 
so here it is con going and uh, connecting towards the transverse sinus okay and on the inner aspect we can see some additional veins we can see one vein coming and draining into this straight sinus this vein is the great cerebral vein of galen okay and there are two small veins draining into the great cerebral veins that that is the internal cerebral vein okay now let's try to compare the location of the major dural venous sinuses in a real dissected 3d specimen okay so here is a real dissected 3d specimen what we can see here this is the fox cerebri above the fox cerebri we can see a narrow space which is there this space is nothing but the superior sagittal sinus okay so you can imagine splitting of the endosteal layer and meningeal layer here so superior sagittal sinus it's here inferior sagittal sinus lo is located here in, in the lower margin and here as we know that endosteal layer cannot reach this point okay so this inferior sagittal sinus is formed due to the reduplication of the meningeal layer okay meningeal layer comes down it again goes up and it encloses the inferior sagittal sinus okay so inferior sagittal sinus is between the two meningeal layers itself and there is one more sinus the straight sinus is also there uh, between the meningeal layers okay because endosteal layer cannot reach this point right so except these two remaining all dural venous sinuses are due to the splitting of the endosteal layer and the meningeal layer okay and when we trace the straight sinus behind there is one space or area here that's referred to as the confluence of the sinuses okay here the straight sinus occipital sinus the superior sagittal sinus all are meeting at this point this is referred to as confluence of the sinuses also referred to as torcular herophili okay so confluence of the sinuses is here it's at a point called as the internal occipital protuberance on the outer aspect we know there is an external occipital protuberance similarly on the inner aspect is internal occipital protuberance okay so we have identified the location of superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus straight sinus there is a fold of dura mater here that's referred to as the tentorium cerebelli when we see the margins of the tentorium cerebelli on the posterior aspect there will be the transverse sinus okay and anteriorly the sigmoid sinus will continue downwards towards the jugular foramen okay and uh, identification of uh, the location of the cavernous sinus the sphenoid bone is here adjacent to the caver uh, sphenoid bone is the cavernous sinus located here it it is deeper to this dura mater that's why the space is not seen clearly this is the location of the spino parietal sinus okay and this is the location of basilar venous plexus okay Okay. so approximate location in the real 3d dissected specimen also we saw and uh, one thing to be noted is the superior sagittal sinus it continues as the right transverse sinus and the straight sinus it continues as the left transverse sinus okay that is the reason why the caliber of the internal jugular vein okay sigmoid sinus when it goes through the jugular foramen its name changes as the internal jugular vein at times the caliber or the width of the internal jugular vein is larger as compared to that of the uh, left internal jugular vein okay right internal jugular vein is larger why because it is draining the larger sinus the superior sagittal sinus is large that will ultimately continue as the right internal jugular vein okay so this was about the identification of the various dural venous sinuses in the 3d model and we have many uh, anatomy quick revision tables available for the first year medical students if you all want to access that please whatsapp us at this number and uh, please do watch other sessions of this youtube channel thank you